an optimistic prophecy for the future, the birth of Christ the Savior. This is written by the Bishop of Flores, Father Augustine Contiotu. At night, my dears, that night when the shepherds were tending their sheep on some slopes of Bethlehem and the stars of the sky were shining with an extraordinary brightness, on that unforgettable night a solemn procession was heard, not one or two angels, but a swarm of angels, a whole army, ascended and descended in the heavenly dome and sang the sweetest, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Luke 2.14 There was no other hymn in the world literature that expresses such high meaning with so few words. It's a divine hymn, a divine masterpiece. It's an official doxology. It's a summary of the work of our Lord Jesus Christ came to do in the world. It is also a prophecy, an optimistic prophecy about the future of humanity. Let's take a look at and on peace, uh, peace on earth. What does this this word mean? When Christ was born, my beloveds, politically humanity was united under the scepter of uh, Augustus Caesar, and for the first time there was peace in the whole world, universal peace. If in any part of the state, from the Danube uh, to the Rhine River down, an un, a disobedient people dared to raise their heads. The movement was suffocated in a short time by the cruel legions of Rome. Peace reigned, which historians call by the Latin name Pax Romana, Pax Romana meaning Roman peace. So there was a peaceful policy in that world, but the people were not happy. The world sighed, and, and oracles of Delphi and Sibyls of Rome and prophets of Israel coincided and prophesied that someone would come. Expectations of nations, Genesis 49.10, who would crush with power the regimes of violence and upon the ruins of ancient world will, be, will establish a new ideal society, the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 3.2 and 5.3, of which there will be no end, Luke 1.33. He will come. The amazing thing is that even the apostles, the peoples of America, cut off and without any contact with the Europeans and other people. When Columbus arrived in America, the first question that the natives, those barbarian, asked, who do you think it was? Are you our savior? Have you come? Until then, by tradition, there was this expectation of the nations. And indeed, he came, it's not a lie, it, it is the greatest historic event of our planet. The expectation of the nations has come. He is the one that the peoples of America were even waiting for, the one that Rome was waiting for, the one that the people of the East were waiting for, the one that the astronomers of Persia and the philosophers of ancient Greece were waiting for. He was to come, and he came, and it's a reality. How did he come? not as a gladiator, not with strength of legions. He came unarmed. He came as a divine infant. He was born under humble circumstances in the cave of Bethlehem. Why did he come? He came to bring peace to the world. But what could this peace be about which uh, the army of angels sing and on earth peace? The peace of our Christ differs from the Pax Romana, the peace of the world. The peace of Christ has depth and breadth. It is the threefold peace, peace first with God, second with our neighbor, and third with ourselves. Peace with God, how can I put it? With an example, when we were little children and we did some mischief, we hardly went home that night. We were afraid of our father, our mother, and only when our father calmed down and with a nod to him we understood that he loved us, we would run close to him and he would hug us and kiss us, and thus the relations between father and son were restored. Something similar happened to humanity. Man sinned, violated God's commandment, and derailed. Since then, the shadow follows him, a feeling of guilt. It is a universal psychological phenomenon. It's a feeling of all the people of the earth. 
It's the feeling that the ancients expressed with the uh, Irenes, and it's what we call today anxiety. Psychiatrists cannot cure anxiety, and there are many neuropsychiatrist uh, psychiatric clinics. This anxiety in the final analysis is nothing but a consequence of the enmity between man and God. But as the Apostle Paul says in his letter to the Romans, we are enemies of God, Romans 5.10. Peace came, the miracle happened, man was reconciled with God. The Chinese wall which separated heaven and earth, God and man fell. It was demolished by one, our Lord Jesus Christ, and it's not a lie. Through Christ, sin is forgiven, guilt is removed, and in the depths of his being, man hears the sweet voice of the Heavenly Father. Peace with the neighbor afterwards, sin disturbed harmonious relations not only with God, but also with fellow human beings. Since Cain killed Abel, and the soil of the earth was stained with blood, since then abysmal hatred was reigned, has reigned. The result of hatred is civil strife, local and global wars. Hate is like a fog in which you cannot distinguish your opponent. Thanks to, uh, to the cases where a brother shot his brother, the awful fog of hatred covered the earth and love was not existent. But Christ came and the Son of Justice dispelled the fog of hatred, Son, that is the light, S-U-N, thus peace is restored. Peace with God, peace with our neighbor, peace even more peace with ourselves, strange and yet true, sin split the single personality of man and it divided him. We are not one, that is a lie, we are two and divided. As Plato also observed in the depths of the human heart, two worlds fight, darkness and light, truth and lies, angels and Satan, wild fight. The greatest battle is not one of those that history describes. It is the one that takes place inside our chest. Here, uh, the field is the human heart. Two forces are fighting there. One reaches towards the sky and it reaches above. The other one wants to drive us down. It sinks us like a pencil, like lead. And man is like an eagle that wants to soar, but someone cut off its wings. That's the drama. War inside our breasts, our heart, which is the throne of God. War from the day a man is born until the end of his life. And if he submits the flesh to the spirit, the lower to the higher, then victory, victory beautiful. As our ancestors used to say, the highest victory is defeating oneself, oneself defeat what, defeating oneself. For as much as a man can harm himself, no one else can harm him, not even the devil. So peace with God, peace with our neighbor, peace with ourselves through the peace of conscience. Peace, sweet name and sweetness things, according to St. Gregory the Theologian. Where do you live? Where are you? In the palaces? In the academies? No, in the cave of Bethlehem. The dove rests in the heart of humble people. Shepherds, those who carry out the will of God. Plenty of peace to those who love the law of God. Psalm 118. And on earth peace. Ah, and you'll tell me these are fantasies, nice theories. But what is the reality? Indeed, at this time on our planet, there are many hotbeds of fire, hotbeds of war, the superpowers have opened up the mountains and hidden nuclear bombs in artificial caves. So should we despair? No, my dears, we are optimistic. Since the star of Bethlehem rose, bundles of hope poured into the world. We believe that Christ is the universal axis, the center of humanity, the Alpha and the Omega. We believe that one day world peace will dawn and according to Isaiah's prophecy, the lamb will feed with the wolf, Isaiah 11, 10, 6. The nations, hence the warlike ones, will become peaceful. A great mystery will be accomplished, and then there will be one flock and one shepherd, John 10, 16. And again in the ethers will resound the eon of the ages, 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. This is by Bishop Augustine, and I've translated this for you from a Greek article. Please leave your comments, and thank you for your support. I support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.